Hi everyone, it's Mike here. So I was going through my collection of Tim Holtz little peeps, ready to do uh, the penultimate page in my volume of the Dolls Journal. And yes, this is the penultimate. There's only one more after this and that, that journal is finished then. Um, and I found these two and I thought they were, they kind of go together, although they're slightly different colors, but they're pretty much the same size because he sat down, that you can maybe, you know, just group them together to create a nice little cluster. So once I've got those, I thought, well, I'll go through my ephemera collection, my little tub of ephemera bits and pieces. And as I'm going through it, I found these two little um, flashcards. And I thought, well, I could kind of combine those into another kind of quote or phrase and then add some ephemera cluster bits to create this page in the journal. So that's what I'm going to do today. So I've already, like I said, I've already chosen the two dolls that I want to use. I've already gone around the edges with a distress marker, the walnut stain one, just to get rid of those white edges. Um, so they're done. I will try and remove the shine on those um, a bit later on with some clear gesso. So I'll just put those to one side and then let's just have a look at the clusters of bits and pieces that I've got. And I'm going to put these two flashcards to one side because I'm going to come up with a phrase um, that combines those two words. So these are going to be the cluster bits that I want to use for um, the staging on the page. So First things first, I need something for this young chappy here to um, to sit on. So I thought maybe just two squarish pieces like this for him to sit on like so. And then I can team this chappy. Could actually stand just behind it, couldn't he? like that or probably in front. So when you're trying to work out where things go on your page, it's often repaired, referred to as auditioning. So are you auditioning your pieces on your page? And that's a really bizarre way of, ref of referencing it, but that's sometimes how you know people who do these art journal pages and video um, refer to them as auditioning your pieces. So I'm going to grab these two pieces here as well and I'm going to slide that towards the back just to create my little bit more layering with the cluster and then we can start coming in with some of the smaller pieces. A couple of tickets maybe. Like so and then maybe one more up there just to define that corner. I think that's probably going to be okay for that side. And then I'm going to mirror that on this side. Now you may be wondering why those two words have been blanked out. It's because they were naughty words and I didn't want to offend anybody. So <laughs> I always read the pages first just in case there's any naughty words show. Right so we've got that so let's add in a little bit more ephemera down here just to kind of set the stage for what we want to create. Maybe like so. And then a couple of smaller pieces I think. What we got is a ticket and a stamp. Okay, so we've got a ticket there, so I think we'll add that there, and then I'm going to lay those over the top later, and then maybe stamp down there, and then because we've got this kind of shieldy thing up here, I might just add another one down there just to kind of balance that page out a little bit. Yeah. So, don't know, 
don't know about that little stamp just yet. You don't have to use everything you, you get out of your, your stash. You know, it is okay to return some back. All right, so I think I'm pretty much happy with the layout of those. So what I need to do is I now need to start sticking them down, gluing them down to the page. Now, um, a while ago, I told you about these stick it pens from um, the Do Crafts, I think. Yes, Do Crafts or Design Objectives. Um, I like these because they're pre built with the applicator and they've got a nice little like pen top that you can pop in your pocket. They're great and handy and they're very, very inexpensive. Uh, my local store um, haven't had them in for ages and ages and ages. So when I went in last, um, they did have them in, so I bought some. In, I bought a big stack of them. <laughs> um, I bought half a dozen. So I'm going to use that today because it's easier. Right. So what I could also do is just lift all that off in one go, and then lift all that off in one go. Because I've now got to try and reverse engineer it to stick them all down. So I'm going to do this side first. So we'll take it from the back. So just add some little PVA all the way around. Just makes things a lot easier if we can do this. Because as well, I don't mind when I'm doing the clusters, I never put the glue right to the edge. Because I always find that it adds just that little bit of extra texture if the pages actually start to curl up. In fact, you could actually make it even more of a design feature by curling them up at the edges if you wanted to, just to kind of make it a bit more distressed. Distressed. Okay, so let's add a little bit, actually, let's put it on the back. And I'm not adding any distress onto the edges of the cluster pieces because I am going to go over with a little bit of um, gesso just to kind of knock it back. So we've got that. And then we said we would put that one about there. Let's put it there. Let's create our little cluster so we've got the edges overlapping. And we have our little ticket, which we will put there. And now you see, I want the stamp. I want that stamp. I knew it would come in handy. Let's make sure we get it the right way around. That's it. I'm going to add it there. And then we can stick that little shield. Up there. So that's going to create the cluster on that side of the page. And then I can start to put the cluster on this side. Pretty much as it was. So, yeah, let's do it that way. The other thing about using wet glue, I'm just going to move that over, is that you do have a little bit of wiggle room as opposed to a dry glue, like a, a glue stick. Not so much. Wiggle room. Okay, so I've got to be careful with our chappies here now. Make sure I get the right kind of heights for them. So let's just bring them back in again. So I'm not going too far off the page. About there-ish, that will do. 
so in fact let's stick that one like that yeah that's about right that's about right like so yep happy with that so I've stuck those two together so they can now get stuck down as one. Okay, so we'll place that about there, which is almost like the same kind of height as that page at that side. Alright, so now what I need to do is to try and see if I can glue these two because he's coming over the top of that one, he's over the top of that one, so they're kind of intertwined a little bit. What I need to try and do is not glue his hand down and not glue his leg down until I really need to. Or I could just add the glue now on his foot. And remember this will dry clear because it's PVA, so it doesn't matter if it squidges out a little bit. So foot, foot. Yeah, I know the light's a bit funny but there you go. So I think that is just about right for those two. So let's flip them both over and add a little bit of glue on there, a little bit of glue around there just to create the cluster and then we may as well say hello as soon as you've just creeped in a little bit. Oh, that was very good actually. No. Good morning everyone. They would have had the rustling of your trousers. That's not a pleasant sight. <laughs> well, better than rustling in my trousers. Well, this is true. I like that. Okay, so if we pop those, I'll make sure that they. Is look. that Aesop and Edward? <laughs> Aesop and Edward. Well, there you go. I hadn't named them yet. Which one's Aesop? Aesop's one on the right. Okay. Isn't it? There we go. Let's just tilt that a little bit. Obviously, an Aesop. Really? Yeah. It's a strange name. Apo well, yeah, obviously. Um, well, apologies to anybody that's called Aesop if you're watching. Not a very common name, though. Right, okay. So, yeah, so those clusters look pretty good. So I just need to add in these other little bits that we said we were going to add in at the bottom. And I've just realised I've made a huge, huge, huge mistake. Haha, -ha. but there you go. Right, so let's just take, as Ian calls them, Edward and Aesop back off again. Because I don't want to stick them down just yet. I want to add some gesso to the page. So, there you go. You could have told me before I stuck it down that I was getting ahead of myself there. Totally and utterly getting ahead of myself. Right, and then the last bit, I think, because now we know where they're going to go, should we put it there or should we put it there? No, let's put it there. Just sticking out a little bit. Cool. Okay, so, pen nib back on. Probably got distracted with Ian walking in the room. Right, okay, so that glue will dry, it's not a problem. So I'm gonna give this a few minutes, since I've done that in one continuous take. Uh, I'm gonna give that a few minutes just to dry and take, and set, if you like, and then I'll be right back. Time to put the kettle on, methinks. Okay, so they've had a little bit of time just to dry and set on the page now. So. 
I did mention using some gesso, so I've got some white gesso here. This is just some um, white gesso from Indigo Blood. Indigo Blood? Indigo Blue. It's because I cut my finger. I've got blood on the brain now. So I just want a little bit of that. Now what I'm going to do, just to make sure that it's not too white on the page, is I'm actually going to get a little bit of the gesso. I'm going to put it onto this craft mat here. And I'm just going to add a little bit, he says, just a little bit. It's a rubbish spritz bottle, isn't it? Let's get me another one. Here we go. A little bit of water, just to kind of water it down a little bit. And I'm just going to go over the top, just to kind of tone everything down and kind of unify it. Because I've added the water, you will still be able to see um, the text and some of the features of the ephemera coming through. It won't dry completely opaque. Adding that little bit of gesso just also primes the surface ready to accept other colours, which is what I want to do next. Okay, so that should do a full of that. Put the lid back on my gesso so that I don't get my elbow in it. And then just get that wiped off from there. Okay, it's a bit more acceptable. So just get that dry. And then I'll be right back. Okay, that's pretty much dry now. So what I want to do next is I'm just going to move some pieces out of the way a bit of space here is I want to add some colour so I've got four of my um, brush oil sprays that I made the other week so you may have seen me use these in our gel page last Saturday where I used uh, texture paste for the page so what I want to do is just add a little bit of colour now these will kind of like start to roll so I'm not going to add huge amount. So this is the sandstone colour that I'm adding. And then I'm going to just add a teeny teeny bit of water. Now because these pages are so porous they will just start soaking in that colour almost straight away. So they will dry pretty quick. So I just want to put something underneath the cover of this um, this side here, just to raise it up a little bit to stop it from running into the centre or away from the centre if you like. So I've just got something just to kind of make it a little bit flatter. So that was the sandstone colour. So now I want to add a little bit of yellow ochre. So just a tad around the page just to get more colour into it. And I'm not bothered if they start to kind of blend a bit which is fine and then I want to add a little bit of lime green. If you're wondering I am just getting them started by spritzing them into my water pot at the side. So I'll add a little bit of green in there. Okay, and then I want to add a few kind of highlights just because we've got some pink in there. I just want to kind of balance it a little bit over here a little bit, but I don't want it to look like blood. <laughs> 
if you know what I mean. Okay, so while we've got that there, let's bring that sandstone back in, just give it a bit of a shake up just to make sure. And then we can go back just to dull it down a little bit. Okay. I'm liking that, so let's get that dried off. Okay, so I'm just going to dab off some of that excess. Now, if you were one of the people sat at home worrying to yourself that it was going to be too dark and grungy and look like mud, as you can see, because the, I've put the gesso down and because the paper is porous, those colours have kind of died back, which I kind of knew they would do. So what I can do is I can come back in again and just add those other highlights of colour that I wanted just to intensify them so there's more green in there now than there is brown so I will get that dried off again it will die back a little bit but at least the colour will be a little bit more intensified Okay, so as you can see now, it's got more of a greenish cast over it. You can still see the papers and the clusters underneath, but you've got just that little bit of extra colour popping through, so it's now kind of balanced itself. You can add a highlight colour if you want to, but we're going to do a bit more to the page before we're finished, so no need to panic. Okay, so it's time to stick can't remember what Ian called them now. I want to say Enoch, but that's not what he called it, was it? Jebediah. No, that wasn't it. <laughs> oh, I can't remember. Okay, so we've got that back on there. Now we can drop that back down where we wanted it to go in the first place. And like I said, it doesn't matter if we get a little bit of that PVA squidging out. So I need just to get these held down a little bit, just so that they grab. So I'll just hold those down and I'll be right back. Okay, so they're pretty much stuck down now, but they're still shiny, so I do need to get rid of that shine. So I've got some clear gesso, oh, oh. which when painted over and dried, will make these shiny chaps matte. So let's just go over those. I may need to do a couple of coats on this because sometimes you miss bits because your brush strokes kind of um, lifts <laughs> once you've painted on. You kind of, if you go back over again, it, it'll lift it off, particularly on a shiny surface. So, like I said, I may have to do more than one coat on this. So, I will do that. Um, probably go on to fast forward so you can see if I do, do need to do a second coat and then I will join you when that's dry and flat and matte.
Okay, I think I've managed to get all of the shine. There's a little bit beyond the tip of his shoe there, maybe a slight little bit just there on his trousers, but I think I've pretty much got most of it. Okay, so while that's cooling down, because it has got incredibly hot, I'm going to work on my phrase that we had on this side. So, using those two flashcards, I'm going to add those onto the page. into that cluster, but I've also printed some extra wording that I want to add to make it into a sentence. So let's just move that to one side while that's cooling down. And I've brought out of retirement my antique linen distressing, mainly because their ghost cards are kind of off-white, they're not white-white, and my printed bits are extremely white white. So I'm just going to grab some antique linen and I'm going to go over the top just to see whether I can kind of just dull the colours down a little bit. Kind of make them a similar colour. Grunge them up a little bit maybe. And then just to kind of help it along <coughs> a little bit. antique linen into here as well just to kind of blend it there's the other one and when I was doing these I tried to match the font as best I could without making it exact because I wanted them to be slightly different Right, that should do for that, and then let's bring in the vintage photo, and then we can start to add some proper kind of grungy age around the outside. There's a big difference between the white and the grunge. Okay. So we're going to add who we are is defined by what we do. So pretty much we are, well you can tell the metal of a person by their actions as opposed to their words. So we can now get rid of that little mat, bring my page back in, it's all nicely cooled and then bring the glue back and then we can start gluing these down I'm 
I'm going to do is I'm going to place the larger cards first. Because I can add them better to the cluster that way. equally space the remaining words See, sometimes I forget to talk when I'm doing these at journal pages I get so intent on what I'm doing I kind of start sentences and then forget to finish them just over the edge. Probably going to need <laughs> Mr. Bentley's downstairs is asleep but I can hear him you know when dogs um, like, kind of like bark and, and, and yip in the sleep because they're dreaming well, I can hear him downstairs doing that. He's doing a lot better um, his cuts on his paws and the big greys on his chest is now healing quite nicely so he's feeling a lot better in himself now because the other day he was feeling very very sorry for himself okay so we've got those stuck down now I've got my Stabilo All pencil um, I'm going to create a little bit of a, let's see if I can bring in another, excuse the stark white of this. And I'm just going to go over the top and then get a water brush. I'm just going to activate the watercolour pencil and I'm just going to add in a few Grounding bits underneath. I've used a little bit too much black there, so we can lift that a little bit. And then just start defining a few little shadows. I don't need it to be really, really dark. I'm just going to be careful I don't lift any of the colour. I laid down with the spritzers because they are water reactive. Just adding a little bit, just dotting and dabbing a bit. Just 
just to kind of create a few shadows and a little bit of ground in. Maybe a little bit of shadow there, just to kind of define where he stood. I mean, I could just go around with a pencil and add those on, but I kind of like to use the same um, mediums as when I'm I've created the background, so let's move that out of the way. I think I'm kind of happy with the way that's turned out. Um, I think maybe I could do with a few splatters, but I think black ones are in order this time rather than white. Just to finish it off, just to kind of bring it all together, to find where's my fan brush gone. There we go, there's one of them. So just pick up a little bit of black paint, actually. Has that mat gone? I shouldn't have put that down just yet, because I can use that to mix up the black paint for my splatters. A little bit of water, a little bit more paint. Just put some fingers over the faces. I'm not going to add huge amounts. Just a few, just to kind of bring it together. Yeah, that will do. As you say, I splashed them all off my hand. <laughs> just kind of gives that little bit of interest in the background towards the top. So let me just quickly get that dried off and then I'll be back. Okay, so the splatters are now dry for that one. So I'm just going to bring back my little mat because I want to add some distress around the outside. I think it deserves a darker frame. Just around the edges. So I'm just rubbing gently, just to kind of create that vignette kind of look or feel to the page. And just gently add that brown colour all the way around kind of frame it, bring it in. See, sometimes I add scribbly borders, sometimes I just add a little bit of colour. So just put that page protector on between the previous page. And of course, if you wanted to go a lot darker, you could always add, you know, darker brown or even black if you wanted. Depends how how vintage vintage you wanted to go. <laughs> Distressed to taste, I think, is the phrase. Okay. So that's now got that really nice kind of mellow, um, almost warm kind of border around the page. And uh, you can just bring in some of that colour into the page if you want to, just to kind of warm it up. That green in the middle kind of really does help, um, just to lift it, I think. Would have worked just as well with nice turquoise blue as well. But I like that. I like the colour palette. I like the greens with the browns with just that hint of like a reddish pink in the background. Do like it. Do like it a lot. Right, even if I do say so myself. But like I've said before, I'm only really pleasing myself because this is my art journal, nobody else's. So 
I'm just bringing you along for the ride. So that'll do for this page, I think. So I shall put today's date, whatever it is, 24th of May, I think. So it's Sunday the 24th of May, but you'll be watching this a bit later. So I'm just going to sign it and then date it. And then I'm going to call this page done. Dun, 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 dun. So I hope you've enjoyed watching the penultimate page in my volume of the dolls, or volume one anyway, volume two to be decided. But I hope you've enjoyed watching that. If you have, please remember to give it a thumbs up, share the video with your friends. And if you haven't subscribed to my YouTube channel already, you can do so by clicking the button at the end of the video. That's all from me for now. I will see you all again very, very soon for the final page. <laughs> Bye for now. I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of my angels because without you these videos would not be possible. Thank you.